This week on The Splash, we look back on some of our favorite stories of 2018. Then we revisit good conversations with good friends. And later, we celebrate the people that make our community special. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. All so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Hi, thank you for being with us here on The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Over the past year, a lot has happened in Greater West Bloomfield, and we here at Civic Center TV have been on the front lines to capture all of the action and good memories. So let's take a look back at some of our favorite community events in 2018. We're here for Pop with a Cop, which is introducing our new police chief to introduce him to the city, to the residents that come here to the lodge and anybody else that would like to come and join in. We've invited some of the neighboring communities to also come in and for their police uh, chiefs to come over also if they would like to and um, kind of introduce themselves to our new chief and for the chief to introduce himself to our residents. I love coming together with the community because so far since I've been here for about three months I've met a ton of people everybody's been great officers from the surrounding communities Orchard Lake uh, Sylvan Lake, um, West Bloomfield, meeting all those guys. There's even another one just popped in the door and we'll be coming up here in a minute. But um, it's, it's, it's just the opportunity to meet people in a non-threatening manner and they can find out more about who I am. Come up and, and talk to me. I'm not hidden behind a door in an office. You don't have to walk into the police station to find me. Over the summer season, the West Bloomfield School District began updating their schools to bring the student learning environments into a new era of education and to improve the facility's layouts to better suit our modern times. Well, well thanks to the foresight of the board and the support of the voters, we passed a $120 million bond. The first phase of our work this year is, is really to work on the high school. We're renovating all the classrooms in the high school. Uh, we are also working on Chico Elementary School and Doherty Elementary School, and it's the same thing. It's a complete renovation. Uh, we're going in and refurbishing all the classrooms, and, and actually uh, part of the elementary school projects, we're redesigning the entrance to the schools to make them more secure, and, and we're, putting, we're installing uh, key card access and, and remote cameras. Uh, at all the schools uh, that were that are under construction this summer. Food Truck Rally brought members of the community together to raise money for West Bloomfield Youth Assistance. The event was a refreshing way to spend an evening and families were out enjoying the food trucks, bounce houses, live music, local shopping vendors and more. Coming together to help our youth is one of the things West Bloomfield Township does very well. And with an overwhelming attendance and positive support from attendees, the Food Truck Rally demonstrated this community's commitment meant to helping each other. Today we're here for a solar celebration and ribbon cutting for uh, the 20 kilowatt array that my students were able to research, do all the uh, uh, energy auditing, solar resource assessment, uh, raise all the funds, win all the grant money, and actually install this thing to power the entire science department at West Bloomfield High School. Uh, so we're real excited about it. The solar array, which has already been turned on, will actually provide all the energy, the electrical energy that the science department needs to run. And these kids are really ready to go. They're ready to transform Michigan's economy, uh, protect our environment, stop climate change, and they are leading the charge. To relive all of these memories again, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash 2018 community. We often have the pleasure of interacting with many of our great friends, neighbors, and partners across the community and have the joy of meeting a lot of interesting people and seeing new and interesting things along the way. We now go back and remember some of our most interesting and compelling stories of 2018. The Chamber of Commerce brought a meditation coach as a part of their business innovation generator meetings discussing different ways that meditation can help out in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, that it helps them to live more conscious lives, makes them aware of uh, their tendency to engage with thoughts. Um, it can help with anxiety, helps with focus, and uh, really helps with creativity as well. In recent years, studies have shown the increase in productivity in the workplace due to meditation, and West Bloomfield is providing the opportunity for the chamber to learn the practice. This training session was in-depth, putting our leaders into highly realistic simulations of the front lines of firefighting providing them with a new perspective on our fire department's efforts. Well, there was all t sorts of different training exercises they put us through. Uh, I have a new profound respect for 
firefighters and uh, EMTs. Um, the uh, it was uh, grueling, uh, scary, and, and hot. I mean, we went into a building that was completely dark. So this is. Uh, you know, phenomenal training and uh, very grueling. Our leaders were invited to participate in these simulations as a way to experience an element of what it takes for our exceptional fire department to protect our four municipalities. And Chris Diarcy, who is the assistant, or the executive assistant to Supervisor Steve Kaplan, they got together and created this idea of having food trucks on campus, on town hall, you know, town hall campus, and it expanded to include parks and rec and you know, police and whoever's on campus, anyone at the library, um, to just allow them to have an opportunity to come together and have lunch together. An additional benefit of Food Truck Tuesdays is that it allows members of the community to come see what services are available to them and to discuss local issues with township officials. The yoga club's practices have helped West Bloomfield students learn strategies in calmness and an improved sense of self, which in turn has given them a greater sense of accomplishment and self-confidence. Our instructor, Linda, who's amazing, um, she expresses and teaches us that um, sometimes that we shouldn't lose our way when we go out into the life of school and into the stresses of our life. And by not losing our way, we maintain our own personal beliefs and um, personally, I think that maintaining what you stand for and who you are is just as important as practicing in the real life. On January 13th, our community lost a leader, a friend, and a true beacon of positivity. For 73 years, Jim Endress lived as a man of great integrity, one who valued honor, respect, and the power of giving. While Jim was the kind of man who never took life's ebb and flow too seriously, his focus on bringing his neighbors, colleagues, friends, and family joy was unbreakable. Jim was a giver, donating years of his life to help others in the community. He served time as a Sylvan Lake City Councilman, Mayor Pro Tem, as well as on the city's Planning Commission and Parks and Recreation, where he played a key role in making the ties that bind the Sylvan Lake community together even stronger, fostering relationships between people from all walks of life. To see more of all of these moments, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash 2018 people. Coming up, we look back at important information learned in this past year and then some of the best moments from Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for being with us. One of the most important roles of ours here at Civic Center TV is to inform the public of important information. And we have a lot of partners in the community that help us learn about special programs and provide our viewers with helpful tips for daily life. So let's take a look at some of our best informational stories of 2018. The Tuskegee Airmen, as has been said, they are the black men who the military said could not fly airplanes. But they rose to the occasion. They chose to hang in there together, learn to fly when they were told they could not. And yet, what did they do? They won the war. Leaders of the local Tuskegee Airmen chapter led discussions and showed a documentary helping the community learn a bit about our history and the lessons it possesses. One thing that the kids and the people in our community can learn from the Tuskegee Airmen is 
perseverance, how to stick together. When you accept a task, do it and do it with pride. Not just that it is important to the community, but it's important to everybody. Bloomfield Police Department has been a participant in the Operation Medicine Cabinet program for many years now. The program is designed to allow our area residents to come off come to the police station 24 hours, seven days a week and drop off their unused prescription medications. As many people are, have become aware, the disposal of the uh, unused prescription medications is very important. There are environmental concerns, so we don't want you generally putting them in the trash or flushing them down the toilet. There's also concerns that they're going to fall into the hands of people that they shouldn't, either people that will misuse them or accidentally misuse them with, say, a, a young child. So people are looking for a safe disposal site, and that's why the Operation Medicine Cabinet was created. We're seeing more people be willing to actually talk about it. You know, I was just talking with a coworker yesterday that even here at Jewish Family Service that we seem to be seeing more people who are having thoughts of suicide. Um, and I don't necessarily think that we're seeing an increase of the actual people. I think that we as a community and a staff here at JFS through all of our trainings are becoming more comfortable talking about it. And when we take comfort in talking about it, it lets you who's sitting across from us who's having the thoughts of suicide know that we're a safe place to talk to. And that's just so key. And so that's why we do these trainings for anyone in the community, because the more that we sort of demonstrate that I would be a safe person to talk to, you would be a safe person to talk to, you're going to get people talking and sharing their feelings. Because whether or not um, I ask you about your thoughts of suicide, you could be having them. Recently, the Parks Department received an award from M Parks, Michigan's Recreation and Parks Association, for their innovative solutions to winterizing water pumps. Since we've gone to the system, we've had absolutely no broken pipes and we also have reduced the amount of uh, gaskets that we have to replace in our toilets and our sinks. But winterizing the pipes isn't the only innovation the parks have been celebrated for. We, we actually take rock salt and turn it into brine, so we're using less rock salt, which is helping save the environment. We're also mixing in beet juice, which is obviously not salt, which is also better for the environment. And between the two systems, between the brine and the beet juice, we're reducing the amount of salt in that whole process, if we can create some environmental advantages where we're not affecting our environment, after all, we are parks, we should be the green leaders. The main goal is to come up with better ways to do our jobs, do them smarter, and have an environmental impact that is positive to the community. To see even more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash 2018 information. And now it's time for the best of Sidewalk Talk, where reporter Samana Sheik asked the people of Greater West Bloomfield a lot of interesting questions and received a lot of interesting answers. Being stuck in an elevator is bad enough, but it could be worse. Would you rather be stuck in an elevator with an ex you had a bad breakup with or a boss that fired you? A boss that fired me. That would be fun. <laughs> we can have a great conversation. Many people are like, well, lash it out in the elevator. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It would be an interesting time. Probably the ex, just because you guys can sit there and argue, but you really wouldn't want to argue with, you know, your ex-boss. You know what I'm saying? If you were to move to another state, what state would it be and why? Hawaii. Yes. Aloha. Hey. <laughs> because it's warm and beautiful. And everyone wants to go to a warm and beautiful state. Absolutely. Right? That's right. Uh, Florida, because it's really warm. That makes sense. And you probably like the beaches, right? Yes. <laughs> Colorado. Um, they have a lot of like really small towns, and it's just they have like really great views of mountains from these small towns. It's really nice. So if you were president of the United States for a day and could change one thing about our country, what would you change? Oh, I would want world peace. That's beautiful. And why is that? Because I think that everyone should be able to get along and everyone should be happy. Yeah, I would want to bring more awareness to like animals, like harming animals and stuff. Like that's my main concern, really. I would like to change... Um, the Democrats, Republicans fighting with each other and make them really work for the taxpayers that vote them in and have like more joint efforts. So what item of yours do you lose the most often and why can't you keep track of it? 
I lose my chapstick a lot. It's really important to me to have it all the time. And I, I don't know, I guess I don't really carry a purse very often. So I like either put it in my shirt pocket or something. So I'm always losing track of it. I lose my boat keys. Boat keys, really? How? Mm, a little too much Corona on the beach. <laughs> if you could go back in time and give your 18 year old self advice, what would it be? Um, just always stay true to who you are. I like that because a lot of people do lose themselves. Yeah. Uh, go to U of M. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I wish I could have done that now. <laughs> scholarship and didn't go. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I would say don't be afraid. Because I was, I was, in my life I was so caught up in fear, scared, of, scared to do, do things that I wanted to do because what would people think? Would people think I'm good enough? Fear. I would say don't be afraid. Just go, go with your dreams. Follow your dreams. That's what I would tell myself. If you had time to learn a new language, which would it be? Absolutely Arabic, because uh, I, I am Chaldean Middle Eastern, and a lot of my family members speak Arabic. I have not been given, you know, I, I haven't been taught that language, so I would love to be able to speak it. Probably my own, which is Chaldean. Awesome. I don't speak Chaldean. I speak more Albanian than I do Chaldean. Um, French. I want to learn how to speak French, because it just sounds kind of like, you know, snotty and stuff. <laughs> Remember, if you ever see us on the streets of West Bloomfield, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, or Kego Harbor, stop by and be a part of Sidewalk Talk. As always, for more episodes of Sidewalk Talk on demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. Now it's time for the Civic Center TV event update where we provide you with upcoming events around Greater West Bloomfield in 2019. And for more events coming up, visit civiccentertv.com slash events. The Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce installation of board officers happens January 11th at 7.30 a.m. at Notting Hill of West Bloomfield. Join the chamber as they introduce their new board members who will serve for the upcoming year. 48th District Court Judge Diane D'Agostini will officiate the ceremony and the event will be hosted by WDIV reporter Germont Terry. Members can register for the event for $15 and non-members for $25. To RSVP, send an email to wbloomfieldchamber at gmail.com. The 25th annual United We Walk event, January 20th at 3 p.m. at West Bloomfield High School. Join the school district and the community for a celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The 2019 theme is MLK 365 on the run. What are we doing for others? The event is free to attend. For more information, visit the West Bloomfield School District's website at wbsd.org. The West Bloomfield Educational Foundation Casino Night February 8th from 7 to 11 p.m. at Edgewood Country Club. Enjoy strolling appetizers and music by the great Byron in Motion Band. This is a fun night of casino games galore, including blackjack, roulette, and bingo. The foundation provides grants that promote innovative ideas and projects in the classroom that support academic achievement, technology, and the building of leadership skills and good character in our students. To purchase tickets, visit wbef.org or call 248-865-6463. The West Bloomfield Youth Assistance Youth Recognition Awards coming up in May of 2019 at West Bloomfield High School. The community will recognize our local students who have been outstanding academically as well as in our community this school year. The students are joined by their friends, family, and community leaders as we look forward to a bright future from kids in Greater West Bloomfield. And for updates on the exact day and time of this event, please visit wbyouthassistance.org. The 47th Annual Michigan Week Community Awards Breakfast, May 10th at Bay Point Golf Club. Greater West Bloomfield volunteers give their time, talent, and personal resources on a daily basis without regard for recognition or promotion. And we invite you to help us celebrate and recognize these individuals and organizations that serve our community year-round. Join us and the community in celebration of volunteerism in Greater West Bloomfield. You can register for the breakfast February 7, 2019 through April 29, 2019. And find more information online at michiganweek.org. The second annual food truck rally is coming this summer in Greater West Bloomfield. 
Join West Bloomfield Youth Assistance, West Bloomfield Parks, Orchard Mall, and all of our friends in the community for a night of good music, good food, and a lot of fun, all benefiting the youth in our community. There will be a variety of food trucks, lots of activities, and live musicians at the event, and it's sure to be a hit just like the first food truck rally in 2018. For more information on this coming year's event, stay tuned to Civic Center TV or visit WBYouthAssistance.org. And that's this week's highlights. You can find more events online at civiccentertv.com slash events and see everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. And now we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll look at some of our favorite interviews of 2018. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for being with us. Over the course of 2018, we have had the honor of being joined by people from all across the community about a variety of special programs, events, projects, and talents. We now take a look at some of our favorite moments from our 2018 in-studio interviews. It is like a sibling march of the National March, March for Our Lives, okay. um, that is taking place in Washington, D.C. And there are um, tons of marches happening all over the country. So um, we're going to have a mini march uh, in comparison to the D.C. march uh, right in Kego Harbor. Um, Kego Harbor is a great place to have a march because it has sidewalks all with within okay. it so we won't be shutting down any streets awesome. we'll be yeah. marching on the sidewalk there are a lot of signs that we can see in all of our friends that we need to pay extra special attention to um, it could be a regular um, like social patterns or if they're especially just feeling down you definitely need to tell an adult or have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them make sure they're okay check in make sure they're feeling good do you think that there's still such a strong stigma, though, about seeking help, especially as teenagers? Mm -hmm. Definitely. There's a, there's a strong movement to just put up a strong front, keep battling through it, but it's definitely okay to reach out and get support and get help because the most important thing is your health and your own safety. It's insane to come home and actually have people like recognize you and be like, you know, congratulations and stuff. And uh, it's so cool. You know, everyone around here has been so supportive of me from like all my teachers back in grade school to like my parents, like especially my parents. like. They've done so much for me in my life mm -hmm. that it's just it's just so cool to come home and you know have all this hype around me and like all these people that want to come out and like you know say hi. I got like all my friends, little nephews and cousins. You know, yeah. whenever I go hang out with them, like oh hold on, like let me Facetime my cousin real quick. They won't believe I'm with you right now. And like <laughs> all these cool things. So it's yeah. just like it's it really blows me away and makes me so happy that like you know that I've actually like motivated and kind of influenced kids yeah. to get into snowboarding and like yeah absolutely. It's, it, but it's like also weird to me because I'm so young and it's just like yeah. it all happens so like, fast. You're like I have so much like, life ahead of me still yeah, and, and many more accomplishments to come for yeah, sure. It's crazy. So like yeah, I mean I'm gonna shoot for the next one in four years in Beijing. So Absolutely, yeah. that's my next goal, and uh, I'm gonna keep snowboarding as much as I can and uh, mm -hmm. just kind of keep doing what I do. So what is Make a Wish in a nutshell? Just in case those watching aren't sure what we're writing for. The Make a Wish Foundation is a foundation that provides wishes to mm. children and their families uh, for children that have critical illnesses oh, nice. and so we raise money by getting people to sponsor our rides oh. and um, they will take us up to Traverse City, Michigan mm. uh, where we will the next day turn our bikes, uh, bicycles mm. and um, ride to Big Rapids 
on the first day, which will be about maybe 110 miles. Wow, that's incredible. And then the second day we go from Big Rapids to Grand Ledge. Okay. And that's about another 100 miles. And then we finish back in Marshall, Michigan on the third day. West Bloomfield is amazing. I mean, in 10 years I've seen a lot of growth, growth in everything from trees to houses to roads. Uh, Orchard Lake Road has been changed a lot. Uh, improved its wider boulevard and so forth and a lot of development along Orchard Lake Road plus uh, the housing and the trees and it's, it's still a beautiful community. Such a great place to grow up. I remember all the lakes and the green and the and it seems a lot of that is still preserved and mm -hmm. it's there is a lot of growth as he mentioned but right. it's it just seems very healthy and vivacious still right. and uh, it's so what I remember most about it is just you know having the greenery and being able to you know, just have the nature as well as the commercial, right. which is kind of all upped even more now. And as you look back on your time, and I see that you really try to keep the schools modern, what really sticks out to you? Well, I guess the, the things that have had the biggest impact on my life was uh, I've had the opportunity to work alongside three really great su superintendents, doctors uh, Gary Faber and Joanne Andres and Dr. Gerald Hill, who's there now. And prior to that, the district was led by Dr. Seymour Gretschko. At that time, I was with the Community Education Department. But his... Um, his legend still resonates in our district mm -hmm. because uh, what he always said was, his message was, whatever is in the best interest of the child. Mm -hmm. And that sort of permeated everybody else's th thoughts and understanding throughout the district after that. Um, I've seen the district grow in terms of what it has to offer. And uh, in the past, our district, for instance, was not really known for its athletics. And our current uh, athletic director Eric Pierce and the coaches that he, he's got, the phenomenal coaching talent, mm -hmm. have really um, helped us gain national recognition. So those are the things that have changed our high schools on fire thanks to its leadership mm -hmm. under Pat Watson. Um, there isn't one area that's overlooked by the administration there. Our students are educated and they're cared about. For more interesting interviews, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash on demand and select the splash exclusive interviews. And now it's time to look back at some of our favorite episodes of A Minute with Nature, Parenting on the Go, and The Biz, where we partnered with community organizations to deliver interesting information that's close to home. Welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, the park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks. And today we're here inside our nature room talking about native plants and why you might want to plant some native plants in your garden as well. Well, what is a native plant? A native plant is a plant that has evolved here in our area and it's adapted to the climate and soil here. A native plant has grown in Michigan or their native area for hundreds of thousands of years. So have developed ecological relationships with the animals in our area as well. Why would you want to plant native plants in your yard? Well, there's lots of reasons, but one is convenience. Native plants grow better in Michigan. They don't require fertilizer or pesticides, as well as less watering. They, since they're from here and they're used to the conditions here, you don't need to add as much water or fertilizer to the soil that they're growing in in your garden. So they're lower maintenance. But because we're talking about environmental stewardship, we're talking about taking care of the earth. Have you ever heard of Aldo Leopold? He's a really famous person who is an environmental steward, and he actually championed the concept of environmental stewardship. And he defines it as dealing with man's relation to the land and to the animals and to the plants which grow upon it. So environmental stewardship really encompasses all of the earth, the plants, the animals, and the land, as Aldo Leopold tells us. Wow, it sounds like it can be very overwhelming. Why it is it important to, to identify them as sensitives instead of possibly some other health issue? So a lot of these kids often end up with diagnoses of anxiety, some are seen as ADHD, uh, frequently they have autism, but you don't have to be autistic in order to be a sensitive. There is this large continuum. And I think it's good to look at the idea of sensitivities because it takes us to the root 
of what's really going on here. These are kids who are so sensitive to their uh, uh, surroundings that it creates anxiety. It feels um, like there's all this tension and movement in their bodies. And many times I see ADHD kids who are really sensitive kids. And if we can tone down the sensitivities around them, we also tone down their inner tumult. That they, and only they, are the ones that can produce a successful outcome. So the parent, not the child, not anybody else. Like, these are parents who review all the homework papers, they edit them, and what happens is the child gets the A, successful outcome, but doesn't feel any confidence in their own um, potential academic success. Um, also, self-efficiency is problematic because the parents are saying, we don't think you're capable of taking effective action when situations come up. So the parents are controlling everything, they're managing everything, and the child is not um, learning how to find their own resources to rely on themselves. And the key to keeping good optical health starts with a yearly eye exam. The eye exams are more than just checking for your glasses prescription or contact lens prescription. It's more about checking the eye health as well. So that's why it's important to come in even if you've never had a problem with your eyes. You passed every vision test at school. You passed your driver's test. You may have um, issues in the back of the eye that you may not have symptoms of, so you wouldn't necessarily know to come in. Where we're checking these things early on to make sure that doesn't become a problem for you. Which brings us to our cell phones and what precautions can we take to prevent any damage from our new national pastime? The light that comes from these devices, the LED light, um, actually can have a form of blue light which can possibly, there are studies still out there on this, possibly cause damage to the back of the eye to put the eyes more at risk for macular degeneration later in life. So the closer you are and the brighter the screen, there's much more risk. So I tell our patients, keep the, thing, the devices farther away from you, not so bright of a screen. If you put it on the night shift, that's actually easier on your eyes. And to limit the hours that you're looking at the screens, especially children. I tell them all the time, really, uh, unless you need to use these devices for school activities or anything like that, no more than a couple hours a day on the screen is, is best. To relive all of our favorite moments from these shows, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash 2018 segments. Each and every week on The Splash, we honor the special people in our community who go out of their way to help others in our segment, Person of the Week. And we have had the pleasure of meeting numerous people in Greater West Bloomfield who are doing good for others. And we will honor them once again, our People of the Year. In every episode of The Splash, we honor people in our community who go out of their way to do good for others. These are the people that we often don't hear talk about what they do for others, simply because all that they do is second nature. Our Persons of the Week are special people in our community who go out of their way to help keep our community the welcoming, friendly, and genuinely kind-hearted place that it is. When you do good for others, you bring out the best not only in them, but yourself and your community. The people of the year have provided inspiration through their selfless giving, their kindness, and their generosity. It's people like Leah Luger of West Bloomfield, who has turned her volunteerism at the Yad Ezra Food Pantry into her life's work, helping put food on the table for people in need all throughout Oakland County. People like Amy Lee of Kiko Harbor, who has turned her walks into an effort to keep the heart of the lakes clean providing open and tidy parks and pristine waterways wherever she roams. It's those like firefighter William Gracier Jr. of the West Bloomfield Fire Department, whose passion for the history of our local fire department has kept our local heroes' legacies alive and kept our past close to home. And it's people like Sylvan Lake's Monty Must, whose experience with personal tragedy motivated her to help bring connection and closure to those who have experienced harrowing events themselves providing the prettiest little joys from the prettiest little city in Michigan. These are our people of the year. People who care, people who inspire, and people who do good for others for one simple reason only, because it's the right thing to do. And we thank each and every one of them.
If you know someone who is making a positive difference in our community, let us know. Send an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community, and we appreciate your suggestions. Well, that's it for this year of The Splash. You can watch new episodes in 2019 on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. on Civic Center TV, Comcast Channel 15, AT&T 99, and online in HD at civiccentertv.com. You can also listen to The Splash on the radio at 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Civic Center TV. And for more Metro Detroit news, you can listen to Greg Bowman and I weekdays from 2 to 7 p.m. on WWJ News Radio 950. And for all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Brooke Allen. Happy New Year, Greater West Bloomfield. Thank you for watching The Splash. <laughs>